Hi everyone and glad to see you on part two of this video series. So if you've missed the first part, the link is in the description down below and part three will also be included in the links down below when it's uploaded. So in the first part, I've showed you how I've used resin infusion to make this jute plate that is later on bonded with a honeycomb core in between just to make like a rigid strong plate to make like the base of this bullet bike board. So it's a bullet bike board that is manufactured by Larry versus Harry. So it's a cargo bike. And in part two, so this video, I'll show you a bit more about the details on how you can finish this raw plate into like the finished board that will be used on this bike. So it's a bike from a friend of mine and I've just made the plate and I decided to use it like in a good topic. So I've made this plate for him. So I'll be using uh, big threads bonds just to uh, bond it onto the uh, the body of the bike and show you a bit more about the finishing and making the um, L-shaped parts in between the layers of um, of like bonding everything together. And in part three, I'll explain you a bit more about my experience with the bio epoxy and what went wrong. So I've decided to include this as well. You can get good results. But in this case, like in this topic, some factors decided that everything went wrong. Even though you can get good results as well, that will also be included in part three. If you always want to be up to date with new videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and hit that bell button as well to get notifications when new videos are being uploaded. If you want to support me, the best way is giving this video a like. So let's get started with this tutorial. So as you, as you can see in the background, uh, I've changed from uh, workshop. So I've went from uh, one workshop to the other. That's why it's another, another environment because some time went in between. So I didn't find the time to finish this project. But here in this video, I'll show you how I've did it and how I've managed to get like a good result to fit on this Larry versus Harry bike of a friend of mine. So first thing I'm using is the wooden templates that were laser cut before by a friend. And um, I'm using this to make like the lines with a razor blade. So with the razor blade, just like in the first video, I can leave some like thin marks that I'll be able to follow with my jigsaw. So here you can see the templates. It's like, it's like a small scratch into the surface, so in the epoxy, so it's not like you're trying to cut through it, but it's just to leave a mark and show you where to follow with the jigsaw. So I'm using a carbide, carbide blade, you can find them on Easy Composites. If you don't have access to these, make sure you use some like many teeth on your blade, so more like the uh, aluminium blades on your jigsaw, that might work as well. But preferably you use this carbide blade. So it's a perma, perma grit um, carbide blade on this black and decker um, jigsaw. So I'm just following the line. I take my time just to make sure that everything is as close as possible, but just leaving a small edge that I'll be able to sand uh, straight and flush later on. So the next step is like getting the surface like in a better uh, finish. So it's all about sanding, not sanding through it. So I'm using a 180 grit right here and just like leaving a good like a good surface that I'll be able to put a new extra layer of epoxy on later on. So I'm using the mold cleaner from Easy Composites to remove all dust and also like residues that might have been on this parts while transporting it like oil uh, or silicones and stuff like that. So to finish the honeycomb sides, I decided to use some Bondo here. So it's a black Bondo. I'm just mixing it with 2%. I think it was a bit more um, to have it cure rapidly. Um, but this will like close all the gaps on the sides of this honeycomb board. Is this necessary? Maybe not fully, but if you want to get good results, this is a way on how you can solve it. If you have other ways, please share because this is the only way I know and it's quite time consuming doing it that way. So I've just taped all the edges to make sure I don't leave some marks onto the plates with the uh, Bondo. Um, it worked quite well. It's just some time just to make the cuts and make the, um, like the shape all the way around. So this is a stage where my friend came by. So um, 
he has his company Nestor and he's like um, working with trees and healing trees as well a bit or cutting and so on. Uh, but you can find more details on his Facebook page if you're interested into that. So it's all about removing like the baseboard that he had. So this was a multiplex board and just, uh, why did I make this plate on this topic? Is just because I wanted to make a plate. Then he came to me and said like, oh, it would be a cool idea to, to, to put this on, um, on a Larry versus Harry bullet uh, bike. And so for me, I think this was a f like the, the most fitting uh, topic to use this for because it's a natural fiber. He's working with woods. Um, normally it would have been with the bio epoxy, but in part three, I explain you why it was a bit difficult. Uh, but how we can work as well. So here I'm using the big bond um, bolts, like inlets. So these will be fitted into it. So in the previous shots you've seen, we you can see we've marked like the um, positioning of these. And then I've used a tile cutter. So it's a, a fine teeth. It's a bit like the carpet um, or a diamond blade, just to make like a puncture into the surface. And by doing so you can also remove like this top layer because the honeycomb in between is still brittle in some in some stage so it's not like a strong material in between and you can just like stick it out um, and get like the the good circle you need to put that uh, big thread bond into it so make sure you go slowly into it and here you can see it so you can just remove like the surface layer when some of the honeycomb um, like um, like pushing it out. So here I'm just cleaning the holes. So this is also with a, a permagrid um, tool onto my, um, my Dremel tool. So I'm just cleaning the surface and then I'm just sanding these uh, big thread bonds just like in a smaller diameter because they wouldn't fit into the uh, the tile circle that I had, so the cutout that I made. Um, another solution would be just to get a bigger um, tile cutter, um, but I've just went ahead with this one and it worked quite well. So what I'm doing here is just adding some threads. So these are um, plastic threads in between. So these one bonds with the um, P6 uh, polyurethane casting resin that I'll be using to fill them in and like permanently bond these threads into the board. So um, it's a two parts mixture. So it's A and B, you mix them one to one. You have a very low, um, uh, like you don't have much time to use it because it will cure quite rapidly. But this is quite good in, in this project because I wanted to continue from step one till step two, till, till step three and keep going. So this is a good solution to bond them in. So it's a polyurethane bond, it's quite well. And um, I just decided to tin it black because otherwise it would be like a yellowing um, type of plastic. So this fits very well with the jute on the, on the finishing of the board. So then you can remove them. And the good thing is by using plastic uh, bolts, the polyurethane won't stick to it. So it's very easy to remove it and don't have your threads locked with polyurethane uh, when you will be bonding, like um, putting everything together on the bike. So I'm using the epoxy laminating, um, epoxy from Easy Composites here to give it an extra coat uh, to uh, remove like some small pinholes that I have in the board. I'm just using this on the top side. So the side that will be visible on the, on the bike. And um, this is like a solution to fix some small pinholes that you had into your part. Um, and you, you can see like the pinholes sucking up some, some, of the, um, some of the resin. And that's also like a common cause with biomaterials is that they have a lot of moisture into them. And like epoxy resin and um, moisture aren't good friends. So while infusing them, there's a big chance you get some pinholes into your parts. So this is like a negative side of the biomaterials compared to fiberglass or carbon fiber. So using a torch, you can just torch all the bubbles out, getting a good surface finish. Even though if you want to make like a glass surface, it might be better to use glass cast, I think, or the um, coating resin. Easy Composite sells it as well. It's purple and um, 
it's better for like having a nice finish on top but i know this will be sanded again and just to leave a good a good surface without pinholes before clear coating everything so what i'm doing here is i've quickly made a jig just to make the angle in between both plates so in between the uh, front plates and the bottom plates and i'm i'm just using the same material but this is a quick way so i'll be using just a wet layup and clamping everything together because this isn't the crucial part it's more like having a hinge in between it just to make it one solid part uh, later on so i'm just brushing it on with the regular um, epoxy laminating resin with the fast hardener then i'm like folding uh, the both sides of the plastic together just squeegeeing out all the excess resin because resin isn't the strong part into a composite so it's more the fiber and excess resin will make it a bit more brittle so i'm just pushing it on here uh, onto the i think it's about a 60 degree angle i'm just removing a bit of the side so that the resin can drip out and the first uh, i didn't use re release agents i just used some tape that I know that is releasing from, uh, from epoxy resin. Then I'm just clamping everything tightly together. And after a few days, or even normally with the fast hardener, you can remove it after four hours, but I strongly advise you to keep it for, I would say like one day or two, just to make sure that it's fully cured because while cutting it and it's not fully cured, you will, um, like the cutting wheel will, um, will get like uh, in a gummy state and won't cut that well. So. While I've removed and made this first part, I decided to start the sanding. So I'm sanding everything flat again, removing all pinholes that were left. So I'm using a 220 grit followed by a 400 grit just to get everything ready for the, um, the clear coating later on. So I knew it was going to be clear coated so you can sand till 400. If you want to get like a polished good finish, you should go to 2000 and use some good polishing compounds. You can find some compounding pads and the um, and the compounds the uh, polishing compounds on the easy composites website as well or you can find uh, it locally in your um, car um, car shop uh, most commonly you, you will find mcguire and uh, and these type of materials so i'm just using the permagrid rotary tool here on a dremel to go through it i've decided to make some small cuts and go over and over again just to go all the way through you find like a difference in color and i was quite surprised by it so the backing with the carbon fiber will make the jute go like much darker so um this was a layup of around three layers on the hinge and it's exactly the same material so you see here it's dark brown and the hinge is lighter in color um, so this was something new I found out with these uh, biomaterials. If it's backed by carbon fiber, it will leave a darker uh, look and appearance. So I'm using the um, Permabond uh, ET500. So it's a five minute epoxy. It's a 2K epoxy, so it's very strong and it can withstand some uh, vibrations because this is a um, like a rigid bond. You also have the ET, I think it's 515. Easy Composites has a full range of different types of glue that suits different applications. So if you're looking for some good glues, you can find them there. Um, so the two parts were bonded together. Uh, the ET500 500 has a five minutes uh, working time, but has to be cured for 24 hours before like applying some stress on it. So I've waited for 24 hours and then I just sealing um, like the uh, the hinge with some uh, PU um, like it's like caulking it uh, just to avoid having moisture getting in between these layers or dirt um, and that's so that's it so uh, the um, clear coat went on top of it I must say I did the clear coat myself um, it was very humid and uh, like a bad environment to do the clear coating but I have to say like it has an orange peel finish and I have to say I kind of liked it so I, I've kept it that way um, later on I will uh, be doing a new layer of clear coat but now it's more about testing this plate and see that everything works well and then probably I do some matte finish on it uh, later on so um, here I'm delivering the bike back and um, yeah, he was quite happy about, about the finish and the looks of it. So 
If you like this video, don't forget to give this video a like, comment and subscribe to see next videos uh, later on. Thanks for watching.